Hello, investors. This is Ted Zhang and Connor Bates, Associate Portfolio Managers with Revere Asset Management. Today is Sunday, July 7th, coming to you from Fort Lauderdale with tonight's Revere Roundup um, weekend walkthrough. So let's just jump right into it, um, starting with the growth detection gauge. Market leaders, we still have in a bullish uptrend. Um, many, many stocks acting well, mega caps acting extraordinary, and we'll go over that. S&P and Q's new all-time high close on the daily and weekly. So, of course, we have that bullish short-term trend, medium um, bullish trend, and the long-term bullish trend as well. Mid-caps and small caps, though, con continue to lag um, with their RS lines trending down and the price below key moving averages. So let's start off, like always, with S&P 500. Like I talked about, all-time high daily and weekly close, so literally nothing to complain about. We'll keep riding this trend as long as it goes. RSP, though, the rest of the 497 outside of MAG7 is definitely lagging below key moving averages, but we are still forming this really nice base, so we can definitely um, form some constructive action on this right side and break out. And talking about the equal weighted doing really well, the QQQE actually just broke out into new all-time highs putting in an all-time high weekly close. So that is definitely indicating that breath is starting to expand a bit. The Qs talked about it a bit ago, all-time high daily and weekly close with relative strength lines, new highs as well. The Dow is forming a really constructive base as well with this super tight action of only about 1.39% range. If we break out of this over this 395 area, the Dow could get in gear with us as well. And to paint the picture of the MAG-7 carrying the markets, we have the FNGS index, which is quite extended now. It's, as you can see, over 9 ATR above the 50-day. So historically, that is where prices pull back. And Connor probably will end up discussing it as a potential idea. But these can all often lead to decent mean reversion trades and can also even act as an indirect hedge to many of our mega cap exposure and index exposure. This is just a trading view MAG7 index that I created, all-time highs, less extended than um, the FNGX S index, but nevertheless still still trending really nicely. Our my RGA composite on trading view continues the base and looks really looks similar to the RSP, uh, mid cap, small caps, and the Dow. If we really take out the 730 level, we can be in gear for a really nice environment. After some soft softening the labor market data with employment with ADP employment, um, unemployment rate ticking up, as well as other pieces of data like ISM manufacturing slowing that there's a decelerating economy, bond yields have definitely taken a taken a dive on all all the um all the bonds and bonds caught a bit as well. With I guess initial fears of maybe the economy's decelerating and heading for a recession or a slowdown. The dollar, same thing with yields retreating. Dollar broke uh, the 10 and 20 and 50 as well. And that's definitely good to see. We definitely don't want to get above this 106.5 area. With that in mind, gold and silver, really strong moves. And th these weekly charts look extremely constructive. Silver, you could say, essentially broke out already. Copper, same thing, reclaiming the 10, 20, and 50. Uh, found support at the 20-week simple moving average. This looks great, too. Crude, still just trending. Nothing too much to talk about here. Gasoline, similar action. And then Bitcoin. We had a washout and a reclaim of this low here, 56,500. And we found support so far at that level, the lows of the base, and held the 40-week. So... So far, it looks like potential undercut and rally, and oftentimes from failed moves can come fast moves. So we'll see what happens with this. Um, we've talked about this before, but this kind of reminds me and Connor of this NVIDIA undercut and rally right here, actually, down at split adjusted. No, split adjusted, it was about 400 bucks. As you can see, we undercut this low right here and quickly rallied into the highs. So... Let's see if Bitcoin does the same thing. And then Ethereum ETF is very close to approval. It's also- exactly. Yeah. Real quick, if you pull up a chart of FNGS, 
I that think. did the same thing, the undercut and rally inside the base, and you can see it right, right. there. Yep. Yeah. So, and then again, recently before this breakout, um, if you scroll over. Ah, uh, right here. Yeah, right there. Right, like huge failed breakout. Just looked like it was totally breaking down for ripping higher. So, um, a characteristic of strong breakouts and bases are tons of frustration in the base, failed breakouts, failed breakdowns. And then once all the supplies left the market, that's when you get that acceleration. Yep. Completely agree with all that. And I'll just quickly go over Ethereum and Solana because there's rumors and they'll probably get their own um, spot ETFs as well. Ethereum is hanging in there, held the 40 week. And then Solana, actually probably the strongest out of the three, holding this 125 level, which is the top of the previous resistance, which now appears to have turned to support. So quickly going over some breath as we do every week. Um, we have the market Smith indexes. This is the one for the NASDAQ and where the, um, the advanced decline line is just poking its head above the 10 day moving average. So that's definitely constructive. And we want it to look like the Nizzy where we're trending above it. So what is surprising is that, or I guess what is interesting is that there's a lot of disconnect between breath and sentiment. And we'll definitely talk about that. Um, for example, NASDAQ's at all time highs, but this overbought oversold oscillator is at zero, which is pretty, pretty surprising. Um, you wouldn't expect, uh, an overbought oversold oscillator to be at zero when NASDAQ's just zooming into all time highs. Um, and then the 10 day moving average of up volume is also dropping same with down volume. And then there's less, uh, new highs versus new lows too. So. There's still, there's still a lot of dis disconnected breath. And same with the Nizzy too, just a barely above that zero level. But we do have more new highs than new lows in the Nizzy. Going over to net highs again, just poking its head um, in the net high territory, but still seeing that divergence. NASDAQ, we had net lows for a while, but just back above net highs. But again, still have that divergence in net highs. Nizzy though, back above the 10 day moving average and curling up and looking to get back into neutral territory from oversold. So this, like Connor's talked about, could lead to some breath expansion, even though people have been talking about breath deterioration and that price has to come down to, to mean revert to the markets. Um, same with the NASI too, close to breaking above the 10 day moving average. RSI is curling up as well and looking to get back to the neutral territory. Um, we've talked about this for weeks now, but we still are seeing bearish divergence in the percentage of stocks above the 50 day, 150 day and 200 day versus price. So we definitely need to see some sort of um, resolution or just, we need to see this resolve to the upside um, for us to expect that this index were to hold, are to hold up for a prolonged period of time. And same same story here on the NASDAQ. CNN fear and greed. We're back on the more bullish side of a neutral territory. Still not in greedy territory yet. However, AAII remains um, above 40% bulls, even though we did come down from that 44.5% level. But, but however, bears did also come down as well. So still leaning towards that bullish sentiment right now. Um, but again, disconnect with the CNN fear and greed and neutral and the AAII um, leaning pretty bullish. And then the NAM above a hundred. And there are many studies done that when we get back, when we get above a hundred, like these peaks right here, it's often a period of time where we can experience a pullback or correction. And, and let's just do a quick, yep. One thing to know with this number is, right? Like we call these secondary indicators because price is number one, but a lot of these are flashing different things. Um, like Ted mentioned, the NASI just hooked back up from big oversold. And then this number is showing 103. So definitely a lot of, um, there's not confluence right now with breath indicators. So I think price is going to be our best guide as always. And usually every time we see the NAM number over 100, that usually coincides with super overbought uh, breath and sentiment in a variety mm -hmm. of indicators so definitely an interesting um yep. dynamic we have here and we can just do a quick case study for example it got back it got above 100 july 
26th and about this area. That's where we started this three month correction. It got above a hundred here. And even though we didn't have a huge correction, we still pulled back and put in a short term top. And over here, we got back above a hundred and we had this recent April through June ish pullback. And now we're back above a hundred. So let's see what happens um, going forward for the rest of July. And then quickly, after after the economic data that came in last week um, with the softening potential softening in the labor market, we now have about 80% probability of one rate cut in September. We have now about 90% probability in November and almost a guaranteed rate cut by the Fed swaps by December with 50 basis points in rate cuts at 44.7% probability. Um, and then there's 27% for 75 for three rate cuts by the end of the year. So that finishes the general market indexes, sectors, and uh, breath. Connor, are you going to go over some sectors and stocks that you've been following or watching for next yeah. week? Per usual, going to cover some sectors and some stocks. So let's get right into it. Um, so the first I want to talk about is DAPP. And this Have you is shared your screen, Connor? I don't yeah, see, it. see it. No, I don't. It, it it's there. All right. Yep. Yeah, I see the screen now. Okay. So as usual, I'll cover some sectors. So DAPP. This is the first one. This is the digital uh, transformation ETF, and this is composed of a lot of um, Bitcoin miners. And I mean, this is one of the best ETFs I'm seeing coming out of the big stage one base. The weekly looks like a base on base, even better. So clearly money's flowing into this area of the markets and it's coming out of a three weeks tight. One sector that could play some catch up, XLRE. I like how it's getting super tight. It's coming against a big downtrend line from those highs. Uh, moving averages are getting tight. Maybe this cracks above. We start to see real estate stocks get into favor. XBI. Um, you know, again, continues to foul this 95 spot, pulled back into the 50 day, had a strong day on Friday. And overall, this is like acting well, right? Big move up. And now it's just consolidating in the base and maybe this next move it wants to uh, go higher. Um, Art, if growth stocks and, you know, more speculative names are going to get into gear, this ETF sector tends to lead. We got that RS line hooking back on Friday, breaking this downtrend line above the 200-day moving average. So a lot of confluence there. Um, silver, this uh, had that undercut rally, that 27, 24 pivot, and it's falling through. So keep an eye on these commodities. Silver, gold, copper all had strong weeks uh, last week. So definitely an area to continue to watch. And weekly, right? This is like the first pullback after this stage one base breakout. And I mean, every time frame looks great on silver. So this is definitely something to watch. And then I mentioned um, software and cybersecurity last week, and I'll just update these pretty much. Um, software is trying to break out V shape off the bottom. So maybe it pulls back, digests, and then uh, moves higher and then hack as well like pretty straight up the right side. So maybe a little bit of sideways for another move higher, but nevertheless, tons of strength in this area of the market right now. Um, all right, so let's get in the stocks. Irene, so I have three um, crypto or Bitcoin miners and part of the reason why these are outperforming is they have an AI data center angle. And you can see these have been on huge runs. Like Iron, this is a massive move. Now it's forming a high type flag. Um, and yeah, these numbers are, are pretty big as well. See, uh, cores, we own this one as well. This, you know, gap down, uh, let me just pull up an intraday gap down with Bitcoin strength rallied up all day, showing tremendous relative strength. And now this is one is in a high tight flag and then hut. This is another name that I'm just going to mention to show you the strength of the group. And these three are some of the strongest and leaders, uh, for this group. And then, just to show like, so these three names have the AI data center angle. And if you look at like, these used to be the favorite miners, no relative strength, CLSK, 
just going sideways, no relative strength. Um, and that's that's why we're seeing Irene, Coors, and Hut outperform. Those are the names we're focused on. Coin. So Bitcoin, Ted mentioned, undercut that 200 day and uh, you know, trying to reclaim. This one is in a big base, kind of undercutting the low. It's undercut this low end of the base a couple of times. Moving averages are right above. So maybe if it can crack above, above this trend line of moving averages, this one could be a good risk to reward. HUD, continue to watch this. This one continues to be strong. Uh, gap down on Friday, held the 21 day closed high day. And this, you know, it's coming against a pretty clear downtrend line. Futu, so China stocks, I'll pull up KWeb. Huge pullback in China equities. It was looking like a theme, but kind of fell relatively quick. But um, this one got back on my radar. It pulled back with, you know, the whole group as most things do. But um, the 66 level was the top of the base for this breakout that led to this big move. And it undercut reclaimed on high volume. You see that? That's the and some of the best buying volume it's had in weeks. Now it's trying to get back above the 50 days. So this one looks like the leader. And if you look at the weekly, it kind of retested this the top of this wedge on the weekly. So that one is back on the watch list. PANW, I mentioned cybersecurity stocks are strong. This one's getting really tight. Um, I mentioned it the other week, you know, it broke out of this 324 spot. Now it's got like a six day tight consolidation. Um, so looks good. CrowdStrike as well, volumes drying up a ton. And this one's getting extremely tight, has not violated this gap on that inclusion news. And um, yeah, this one's a leader. So if this can break out, maybe P and W will participate, but otherwise this is acting phenomenal. CCL, so this one had that big earnings gap, 135% increase. You can look at these estimates right here. Leisure service group is starting to claw its way back. And this is pulling back to the top of the base from that earnings gap. So we've seen, these are some of my favorite setups, big move up on earnings with a catalyst, with volume. It's pulling back on, on lighter volume, you can see here. So maybe it can uh, hook back above. It's holding the 21 day and, and move higher. Generac, this one, you know, there's hur uh, some hurricanes going on. It's apparently supposed to be the worst hurricane season in a while. And this is a, this is a pure play for that. This is cracking this downtrend line and um, reclaiming the moving averages. So this looks pretty good. And on the weekly, big stage one base. So the hurricane um, starts to get really severe. Maybe this, this name performs. Kava. We, we own this from, you know, 50s area, acting really well. Um, you could argue this is wedging a little bit, but overall, this just continues to grind higher. So it's looking really good. If it breaks this 96, 97 area with volume, that's a pretty viable add-on spot. And it's really the best acting uh, retail restaurant stock. Sweet Greens is kind of leaking off. Um, and then Chipotle kind of leaked off the 50 day, but trying to come back. So still like how Cobb is acting. And then Uber, um, getting really tight, uh, you know, it underperformed here, popped back up above the moving averages and now it's forming a flat pivot. So watching this 7360 pivot, if we can get above with volume, still like the name. And on the weekly, this had a pretty textbook, um, this was the breakout level, shot up, came back, retested it, and now it's got a you know tight, tight consolidation here. And then, like Ted mentioned, F and G S, you know, this is starting to get a little stretched. The the daily range is increasing. This is um, you know, 15% above the 50-day moving average for consecutive gaps. So just watching this for weakness, potentially, um, if you own a lot of mega caps, a lot of big tech exposure, FNGD could be a good hedge. Um, but yes, just, you know, this is starting to really accelerate the angle of the, of the sense, you know, getting steeper. And, um, you know, we're not here to fight the trend, but on, you know, if this starts to crack the eight day, maybe it needs some time for a new base. So uh, watching that as well for a potential hedge. Um, and then actually I wanted to, I wanted to cover, you know, I always, these are, I try to get my best ideas for the week ahead. Um, so just want to show some of the performance from last week. 
Reddit was on the list, had a strong week up 14%, falling through to the upside. Palantir, which I mentioned from software, this one was up 8% last week. And um, after that pivot, it you know came down and undercut. That one shown a lot of strength. Amazon, this one was up four, three and a half percent last week. It's falling through from the breakout pretty well. Now it's forming another tight flag right below 200. Um, Datadog, another software name. This one was up almost 4% last week. Awesome weekly base. And, you know, this is shot up pretty quick. So maybe if it can, it looks similar to a lot of these software, maybe if it can, you know, form a couple tight days sideways and then for another move higher. Um, so yeah, that's, that's some focus names for the week ahead. And then Ted, I'll shoot it back to you. Yep. I'm going to talk about one quick thing before economic data and earnings. So I want to mention Tesla. I was going to talk about the news, but I forgot earlier. Um, they, so first off, Elon ended up getting approved by the shareholders for the pay package. So that took some uncertainty off the table. And then Tesla uh, announced that they, they exceeded expectations for their delivery numbers, um, delivering 27% more year over year. And this recently came out this base. We had this big move up here. And then it consolidated for like six to seven weeks, had like three, four weeks tight in here and broke out from this 188 level. And really just huge volume has flowed in. This has been the neglected mega cap, but it's now starting to get some love. It reclaimed the year-to-day anchor view up and the all-time high anchor view up as well. So I guess expectations for me now, we have this key level at 265. So we're almost, we're probably going to hit that level and then we'll probably need some sideways or this just runs straight up to this 300 level before putting in a handle. Um, but this is definitely something we're watching closely now. And we've been watching pretty closely. The 200 day is still in a downtrend, but starting to turn up. We're back, we're back above the 200 day. Um, so just wanted to mention this. And it seems like the narrative is starting to shift again. Wall Street got over emotional, overreacted, and started pricing in it as a car company. But now the, the narrative has shifted back to Tesla being a robo taxi, AI play, and energy play. So it's just funny how emotion, like the cycles of uh, human emotions just repeat themselves. For example, like up here at the highs, everyone's screaming, it's it's the best AI play. It's the best real life AI play, you know, energy I, play. Yep. This is why I love the, the quote, nothing like price to change sentiment. Yeah. And then at the lows, everyone was calling, like probably down here, literally, People were calling it just the car company. And then it reclaims some key levels, gets tight. And then now we're back off to the races. And it honestly looks pretty good again. The buy signal was when uh, Ross Gerber capitulated right, <laughs> right near, yeah. near the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. All right. So earnings on the earnings front. We actually start earnings this week with just a few. We have, for example, Delta, PepsiCo, but the big banks, like JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and Citi report this Friday. And the banks usually kicks off, kick starts earnings. And so that'll be definitely a time to watch out for earnings surprises, earnings beat and raises to get on some earnings gappers. And it's a really exciting time to go digging for, for some nice gems. In the economic data, we have Powell speaking at 10 a.m. to the Senate on Tuesday, then speaking to the House on Wednesday at 10 a.m. And then some big numbers once again, uh, CPI and core CPI, some more jobless claims, and then PPI, core CPI, and consumer sentiment Friday. So CPI is Thursday, and then PPI is Friday. And then the following week, now nah, we don't have to talk about the following week. We'll just talk about this week. And yeah, so that's economic data, earnings, and then that quick Tesla that I want to share. And actually, just one more thing with perplexity. Connor talked about Irene course and then i forgot the third name you talked about but let's just say you screen those hot. names say what it was hot it was hot so yeah um let's say you screen those names you're seeing tremendous power and you're wondering what's catalyzing it you could just go to perplexity and say what is causing the bullish moves in irene course hot and then perplexity will search the internet for it and this is i mean i call perplexity my my personal research assistant now, and you could do this with any stock to the ups, to the bull side or the bear side. 
and then you can follow up with more questions too. So it's just going through each ticker. It's going through multiple websites and then like Connor talked about, and it should discuss and boom, talked about launched AI cloud services, talking about um, it's, for example, they are Bitcoin miners. So it's obviously going to talk about that. And then they're discussing um, the various AI driven plays here too. So it's really, it's just, it's just really useful tool for everyone in this space for life and trading. And that's kind of just all I wanted to talk about. Connor, do you have anything else? Nope. Nothing right. else for me. Sounds good. So let's get this off here. And so, yeah, that's going to wrap it. As always, we'd like to hear from you. My email is ted at revereacid.com. Connor's is connor at revereacid.com. You can find our Twitters here and you can also reach out to us anytime. You can also email Dan and Don at revereacid.com, the president and then our chief investment officer, who's Don. Um, you can call us at 855-REAL-WEALTH and that's 855-732-5932. And as always, we named our flagship portfolio GrowTection. And so what that means is we want to participate when the market is in uptrend. We want to grow our assets. And then we want to protect our money in downtrends. And if you're interested in becoming a client, please reach out to any of us. And that will wrap it up for Sunday, July 7th. It is 3.33 p.m. And this is Ted Zhang and Connor Bates with Revere Asset Management telling it like it is. Thank you for listening and have a great weekend. And we'll see you guys next weekend.